The year 2023 will probably go down as one of the biggest years in the world of gaming, with tons of high-profile games releasing throughout the year, Tears of the Kingdom, Spider-Man 2, Sonic Superstars, Super Mario Wonder, and Super Mario RPG Remake, just to name a few. Even on the adaptation side of things, we've gotten the fantastic Super Mario Bros. film, Season 2 of Sonic Prime, among other titles. But 2023 wasn't without its own share of problems. The massive Insomniac Games leaks that happened before dropping this video, which I will be carefully touching upon a bit later. It still sucks that the developers have to put up with this garbage. So with that said, it's time to move on from 2023 and look ahead to what the new year 2024 has in store for us. Now, I'm not going to talk about every single game release for next year, it's just not feasible. So for my sanity, we'll just stick to the stuff I cover here on the channel, starting with Crash Team Rumble. As many of you know, Season 3 started a few weeks ago, with Spyro as the star of a show. Via early access, Spyro was unlockable on day one. I gotta tell ya, as a Spyro fan, this made me so happy. I know, Spyro fan is happy to see Spyro in the game. Big shocker. And aside from a new control scheme compared to Reignited, which I wasn't happy about at first, but I quickly got used to it, He's officially my new main for the game. He's the fastest character and completely breaks every part of party mode. I mean, look at this, he's got a roar now. Adorable. While Spyro's inclusion is such a good addition to the game, his presence goes beyond just being playable. The entire battle pass is chock full of references to every game in the Reignited Trilogy, Artisan's Arena based on the Artisan's homeworld from Spyro 1, there's no mysterious door in sight but there is healing sheep, we've gotten several new relic stations focusing on Spyro's many abilities, Gulp represents the epic relic station here, giving everyone a war flashbacks to his difficult boss fight in Spyro 2, uh, well, the reignited version anyways. Regardless, we can't deny just how much Spyro 2 has a major focus for this season. Cause in addition to Ripto, who debuted in the same game, Alora, also from Spyro 2, joins for roster as a playable character for the first time ever. She was originally going to be playable in Spyro Attack of a Rhinox on GBA, but was unfortunately cut due to the developer's workload. Just a bit of interesting trivia for ya. Okay, one more. Spyro's horns when he charges in Rumble is actually a reference to when he charges in the Skylanders games. Seeing as Toys for Bob are the creators of Skylanders, it makes perfect sense to have this callback. Anyways, Alora's dropping in early access on January 4th and will be fully unlockable to everyone on January 23rd, just five days after Spyro fully releases. A new Spyro-themed power is going to be introduced on January 11th, allowing instant transport back to your bank, and I can see the tactical advantage of this one will bring by luring enemies away, so they have no time to prevent you from banking. On January 18th, Summer Forest, also from Spyro 2, makes its debut alongside a brand new party mode, Forest Run. Moneybags is here, and according to one of the new Relic Station badges, we're gonna get to toast this greedy bear Spyro Freestyle, and I'm all fired up for round two. Doodles! Also, the renamed character Bob from Spyro 2, the reignited version, also makes an appearance in the top right corner of the calendar. No idea what role he'll serve, but hey, the more Spyro characters, the better. Season 3 is estimated to end around late February, and with it, we might have an idea of who will be arriving in a future season. According to some data mines, there's some unused voice lines for the announcer for Season 3, and among the files, Nina Cortex, Pinstripe, and Tiny Tiger are mentioned. 
To back up the idea of Tiny making it into the game, his boss theme can be found in the Battle Pass for this season as an unlockable music track. Also, it's possible Tiny and Pinstripe were entirely cut from Crash 4, seeing as there's an unused epilogue narration talking about these two, in addition to Papu Papu and Koala Kong that I never got to discuss. Take a listen. Affronted by not appearing in this game, Tiny Tiger, Papu Papu, Koala Kong, and Pinstripe picketed outside the developers' doors. They were arrested when they accidentally chained themselves to the wrong building. This, in addition to Nina Cortex actually appearing in the game's primary epilogue, it does give us a pretty good idea as to who will be added in Season 4. Shifting back to the Spyro aspect of Rumble, and despite some character redesigns for Alora, the Egg Thieves, the Dragon Eggs, and even the Crystal Dragons, which, fun fact, these were the original designs Toys for Bob was going to use in Reignited before settling on the ones seen in the final product. I do agree that these specific model updates when everyone and everything else looks exactly the same from Reignited does seem a bit odd and could possibly hint at Spyro 4. It's too early to tell, especially with the finalized acquisition of Activision by Xbox throwing an Omni wrench into the gears. But heck, Toys for Bob might have actually started teasing their next project in regards to doing some testing with the Unreal Engine 5 with their trademark Blurred screen, of course, so what are you hiding from us? Either way, for those who went into the Game Awards expecting Spyro because of a new season of Rumble starting on the same day and walked away disappointed, sorry, but we tried to warn you going in. So, I'm not putting any sort of dates for when the game could be revealed. I'm primarily doing this as to not create any more false hype, even though I tried to temper everyone's expectations, and also not to take off any more people than I probably already have at some point. So, yeah. Spyro may be sort of back, but we gotta move on to the next topic, that being the Season Pass Fighters for Nick All-Star Brawl 2. As mentioned in my review for the game, which you can check out in the top right corner, SpongeBob's Mr. Krabs, Rocksteady from Team and T, Zuko and Iroh from The Last Airbender will be joining the roster throughout 2024. Starting with Mr. Krabs dropping in the next couple of months, and he's practically the only character I'm legit interested in playing. And also seeing his interactions with all the other SpongeBob characters, of course, I don't know why I needed to specify that, cause we've gotten 13 seasons and multiple movies of the show, so am I asking for too much? Now, if you're looking forward to these characters, you'll have to either get the Ultimate Edition, aka the most expensive edition of the game, or if you've bought a cheaper edition of the game, you have the option to buy the Season Pass individually, costing an extra 25 bucks. Personally, I think this and the Costume Pack prices seem to be a bit much, so I would wait for them to go on sale if possible. Anyways, let's speed things up and move on to some Sonic news. Sonic Prime Part 3, or Season 3, or whatever you want to call it, drops on January 11th, serving as the epic conclusion to probably the best Sonic cartoon to date. Make fun of a show all you want, I really enjoy it. Shut up. Slight spoilers in case you're not caught up on the previous seasons. When Nine steals the Paradox Prism to create a world for himself, Sonic must team up with unlikely allies to protect the Shatterverse as he knows it. I'm kind of getting some Merlina vibes from Sonic and the Black Knight, specifically surrounding Nine's motives in this season. I don't know if they're taking inspiration from that game, but just an observation. Staying on the topic of Sonic cartoons, The Knuckles Show, which technically isn't a cartoon, has been delayed but still premiering on Paramount Plus within the next couple of months, not too far from its originally planned date. Regardless, it'll keep everyone busy until the third Sonic movie premieres less than a year from now. Shadow the Hedgehog will be the star of the show this time around, getting some redesigned but also Probably the best air shoe design to date, and also the film's logo is a recreation of the Sonic Adventure 2 logo. Seeing as the team is taking major inspiration from that game, 
as well as Shadow's own game, which, by the way, the director of the film actually worked on those very same CGI cutscenes for Shadow's game. So this film could be pretty interesting in terms of the tone, and you guys probably already know what scene I'm talking about and how they're possibly going to handle it and still keep a PG rating. Maria! Well, Sonic X managed it, so... I think we might be good. Still don't know who's going to be voicing Shadow, though I would imagine we'll find out in April, and then we'll get the first trailer in August, following the pattern we had with the second movie's reveal of Knuckles VA, and also the first trailer debuting at the Game Awards. I would expect the same would happen for this film, too. Now, on to the final topic of the video, and those are the PlayStation exclusive platformers I typically cover, you know, Sly Cooper, Ratchet and Clank, and Jack and Daxter. First of all, don't expect anything for these free in 2024, and here's why, starting with Sly Cooper. Let's make this clear, and to not make the wolves at the door any angrier, there's nothing that indicates Sly's coming back in 2024 or any other time frame. If anything, I'd expect a random thing for the TV show, but even then, I do have hope for Sly's eventual return, but the chances are pretty slim to none on that happening. The same goes for the Jack and Daxter movie that's already been announced. I don't think we'll get an update for it, but I'd say the chances could be much higher than anything Sly Cooper at the moment. But while on the topic of Jack and Daxter, it was recently revealed that Naughty Dog, alongside the announcement that they cancelled The Last of Us Online multiplayer project, they said that the decision was made so they can focus on continued development on multiple ambitious, brand new single player games that we're working on. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and say one of them is Jack and Daxter, despite them saying in recent years that they wish they had one in the works, but honestly, I think it's more likely for another developer to pick up the series anyway, which is probably for the best for reasons I will not get into. That said, it's been rumored for a while that Naughty Dog is working on a brand new IP, but since there's multiple projects, I'd personally like to believe that one of them is a brand new Uncharted game. Not a Nate-focused game, unless they wanted to focus on a previous point in the series, and despite Lost Legacy being a heck of a ride, I do see it as a more likely candidate than Jack, especially since a second film is in the works, complete with script. Who knows, but it'll be interesting to see what happens with Naughty Dog's future projects. I still won't be touching The Last of Us though, I've got my limits. Alright, I've saved Ratchet and Clank for last, cause it's an overall bad situation that I said I wouldn't talk about on Twitter, but I simply cannot discuss Ratchet and Clank without bringing it up. Granted, I could just slowly back away, shut the box, and say, guys, we're not getting anything of Ratchet and Clank in 2024, that's it, thanks for watching, goodbye. No, no, no. You guys know me, I cannot do that to you. But I also cannot and will not go into explicit detail about or show anything that was leaked or stolen. Because A, I highly respect Insomniac Games, I've got a good relationship with the studio, and I have to thank them for where I'm at now. Because of games like Spyro Free and Ratchet 2, without them I probably would have never gotten into gaming. So nothing but respect to them, many thanks, and major congrats on making some of the best, and also my personal favorite games in the industry. You guys are awesome and keep on being awesome. And B, I could get fans. Thanos DMCA'd by Sony in a heartbeat, and that is a chance that I'm not willing to take, despite me even talking about this whole fiasco being the equivalent of dancing on a minefield, not just because of Sony, but also anyone else who's wanted to tear me to shreds over the past year or so. So what I'll do is I'll give a simple recap of what happened, give a non-spoiler statement about the Ratchet and Clank stuff, then express clarity about how I feel about this situation so we can end the video. Good? Good. 
Essentially what happened is Insomniac Games was the victim of a major hack. Game builds, future projects, and even personal information pertaining to Insomniac staff, developers, and even voice actors attached to these projects. And if Sony didn't pay the hackers to get all this data back, it would be released online publicly. You hacked our phones. You stole my cross. Listen, Nate. If you're half as smart as you think you are, You'll accept my offer. What's it gonna be? Listen, as nice as it's been to catch up with you, I really gotta take this call, so. Well, we kind of know how that played out, and practically everyone on the face of the earth knows practically everything about Insomniac and the rest is history. We're talking unreleased sales numbers, estimated release dates and names of future projects, early build gameplay for Wolverine, concepts and details for other unannounced projects. Keep in mind that all the stuff you guys have heard about or directly seen in regards to their future projects and sales numbers, we don't exactly know how old that stuff is. For example, Rift Apart's updated sales numbers as part of this hack was estimated for February 2022 before the launch of the PC port. But within all this madness, there was even more info pertaining to the next Ratchet and Clank game. This includes concept art, some story details, part of a script and gameplay concepts. As tempted as I happen to be, I will not be showing any of it. Again, out of respect to the studio and not to spoil you guys. But all I will say is that from what I've seen, I'm very excited for this next game and where it's taking the series, both on the story and gameplay fronts. However, we've still got several more years before we even get to see this game in action, might be on the PS5 or the eventual PS6, but once again, we don't know how old the information is, and the date could have shifted dramatically in the time since. That's it. That's all I've got to say in regards to the Ratchet and Clank stuff in this hack. Other than it's going to be pretty difficult to even speculate about this next game given what we already know from this situation. But despite the excitement I have for this project in particular, this was an overall horrible situation that shouldn't have happened. Like, if it was just the games being leaked under normal conditions, I mean, that alone is already pretty bad, but it's even worse when sensitive employee info is involved. Come on, why do they have to go that far with it? They didn't deserve this. I don't know how quickly Sony can scrub all this, if it's even possible. The Wolverine footage on YouTube I think would be as simple as pressing a button. Not to mention people who've downloaded the game aren't just getting DMCA's, but also being outright banned by their ISP. That's internet service provider for those who don't know. So word of advice, don't, don't do that. It ain't worth the risk, but otherwise, my thoughts, wishes, respect, thanks, appreciation, and continued support goes out to everyone at Insomniac going through this whole ordeal, and hopefully extra steps can be taken to make things a bit more secure for them. It really does suck that this kind of thing happens, and right before Christmas too. Not exactly the best way for anyone to kick off the holidays or the new year, but that's unfortunately the sad reality of it all. So, on that kind of depressing note, I'm gonna end the video right here. As usual, what are your thoughts on the Insomniac game situation? And what game or adaptation are you looking forward to the most in the new year? Be sure to leave all that stuff down in the comment section below. Also be sure to subscribe and ring that bell for more platformer content. And once again, I've been Blue Knight. Thank you so much for watching throughout the year. I really do appreciate you guys sticking around for as long as you have. And I'll see you guys in the new year 2024.